What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here and a super exciting day today for Apple. Bunch of new software. iOS 11.2 Beta 1 has been released. The new Apple Watch OS 4.2 Beta has been released. And this is all before the original release of 11.1 even. We're still in beta on that one too. So very strange, but that one will for sure come out before Friday uh, with the iPhone 10. We might actually be on the GM version already if you're already running it. So you're probably on final release. Anyways, this new firmware comes with a bunch of new features. I found 30 changes. Well, not me personally, I found a lot of them myself, but there are many others that have been reposted everywhere else. So let's go ahead and get into those. Very exciting update, actually, a lot to cover here. All right, so as usual, on the left will be the newer firmware, in this case, 11.2 beta one, and over here is iOS 11.1 beta five. So first thing I wanted to cover is that the power button, when you quickly double tap it twice, will no longer turn the device off. Previously it would, now that no longer happens. There's a little waiting period in between. I also personally found this is one of my biggest gripes with iOS before Apple patched it. When you would accidentally click the volume button while pressing the power for leverage to get it, it would actually change your volume indicator. Uh, as you can see, now that no longer happens, you can press both of them at the same time and nothing will happen. So it's a little bug that Apple has patched. So I noticed a couple things have changed from the actual boot sequence. First off, uh, when you go to power your device on, that weird white flashing screen that used to happen no longer happens. And uh, I'll show you here in just a second, it takes a little while. One, two, three. I've also noticed that sometimes iOS 11.2 beta one is actually faster to respond to the turn on uh, command. So the screen will light up faster, but that's not always the case here. And this is the flashing that I'm talking about. The screen turns black before going back to the boot sequence for whatever reason that happened. And as a result of this bug being fixed, the boot up is so much faster now on iOS 11.2, like almost double of the already fast one on 11.1. So that's cool. And previously on the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, they had a bunch of exclusive wallpapers. Now three of those can now be found on older devices, not exclusive to the iPhone 8 or 8 Plus. Now it'd be these three wavy ones right here. Calculator bug that was talked about uh, briefly where you would do one plus two plus three equals 24 has been patched. So that input lag in the calculator no longer is there. Originally in iOS 11.1, Apple introduced a bunch of new emojis. Now some of those have been tweaked in this latest 11.2. So look at this little scotch icon right here. And on the left in 11.2, it's more realistic looking, not as flat. Also, the order of the emojis has been rearranged, particularly in the food section. You notice there are a bunch of misplaced ones, well, differently placed ones now. Some changes in the control center. So actually jumping into the 3D touch platter here, you'll notice that the icon for the album art is now squared. It's not rounded, which I don't like because it doesn't really match with the whole border over here. It looks a little out of place, but I guess you can see your uh, album art a little bit better now and reported by a couple users. So first off, in the Apple TV control center platter, you'll see now playing for AirPlay 2. This is a feature that Apple hasn't officially added yet, but we're seeing little pieces of it here. Also in the actual music platter, you'll see that there is an Apple TV little widget down there as well. Also bleed through from the AirPlay 2 feature. Now an interesting change from within the settings app, when you really get into the deeper menus, uh, let's say we're in accessibility here and we go to touch accommodations. If I did the very same thing on 11.1, you'll see that the naming up here is a little different. It just says back. It doesn't say where you're going back to. Now this one says go back to accessibility, but at the same time, it kind of messes with the middle text here. It pushes it off center. It looks a little strange. I believe it's also in display accommodations. The really long names, as you can see, look a little funny here, but I guess it's informative to let you know where you're going back to. So in settings, emergency SOS now has a slightly different icon. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit crisper. This one was a little bit too big for its own good. Also, also works with five clicks feature has been renamed to call with side button and it now has a new description below it. It's giving you a little bit more information there. The behavior of emergency SOS changes as well too on the lock screen. So before when you would activate it, it would just go back to the home screen and not show you the passcode or the lock screen. I mean, now you actually have to click on the home button to get to that page. Now, when you go ahead and activate or put in your passcode, instead of going to the home screen automatically, it just unlocks the lock screen to give you the access to do so by pressing the home button. So the behavior changes just a little bit. I noticed there were some changes with reduce motion enabled. So the accessibility setting that kind of kills all the animations on your device. Now going into the control center, when you 3D touch on a platter, instead of getting this jumpy animation, it kind of just opens. It's just there. I'm not sure I like it. 
uh, but it does reduce the animation, I guess, and this goes for any 3D touch platter here. So it just appears instead of sliding into view. Also with the reduce motion enabled, when you actually jump in to spotlight search and exit it, it has a slightly different animation when closing. So up top, it kind of morphs out right away instead of just a gentle fade. It's, it's a little interesting. Also searching in the widgets view now, when you click on the actual uh, text input area, notice that animation and this one, it's definitely different. It slides down now with reduce motion enabled. One, two, three. Notice the animation definitely is different. Also in the widgets view, you can just slide right down to enter that text input field where previously you couldn't do that on 11.1. .1. Also something I definitely noticed that improved in 11.2 .2 is access to the app switcher is much faster now. Check this out. One, two, look at that, almost twice as fast to activate it. One, two, it's still the same speed to get into it from the side using the gesture, but actually clicking the button is so much more responsive now. Also, when opening up the TV application, the welcoming splash screen, the icons have been rearranged here, so a very tiny change. And on the next screen for the sign-in, the text has been raised just a little bit. Also, the TV application now in 11.2 has notifications restrictions as a new option in the settings. Now in Siri, when going to the suggestions, you'll now find a new section for Apple Pay. This was previously seen only on the iPads, not on the iPhone on 11.1. .1. Now it can be found on the iPhone in 11.2 and here it references sending money over messages with Apple Pay. Siri, send $20 to EAP with Apple Pay. So this is definitely new. When you ask Siri to send someone uh, money over Apple Pay, she will reference messages, even though the new Apple Pay over messages feature isn't activated in 11.2. So this will definitely make way a pathway for you to do that through Siri. So actually a lot of changes in the Apple Music application. First off, when actually jumping in to the now playing page, well, some sort of glitch there, you'll get a updated shadow design. Notice how over here there's no shadow because for some reason it bugs out as you can see and then it comes back. Now if I actually dismiss this and go back, the shadow is gone. That has been patched as you can go back and go back and the shadow will still be there. And the now playing tab now sits just a little bit lower on the very top of the display. You'll notice for whatever reason, Apple did drop that down. And I noticed that when you're sitting here in your library and you pull up your now playing page, previously you could see a little piece of the album artwork there on top. Now Apple has fixed that. You can no longer see that in the background. And the actual animations here have changed as well. When you slowly drag up the now playing tab before it would just pop up right Right away. Now you can actually expand it and you get this cool animation as it grows to the top. Now that's the same thing for the downwards one. When you slowly slide it down, it kind of collapses. Now you can go all the way down and then let it go. Also notice the background. Now when I go ahead and start dragging this upwards, the background slowly shrinks and compresses in the back. It looks really, really smooth. It gives a nice feeling to the animation. Also notice the now playing tab on the bottom has an outline, like two little lines on the top and bottom to help you distinguish where it is easier from the background. Definitely a welcome little change. Also notice that when you press the play or pause button, the animation changes just a little bit. Apple slowed it down. It still does the very same pop-up, just takes a little bit longer to do so. Also jumping into the search bar here, it's definitely looking a little bit cleaner. Now that's just the static version. When you click on it, the actual interface here got a little bit tidier and cleaner as well. Also, the feedback app is back on this beta. It's been removed on the later betas of iOS 11.1. .1. So uh, this one's going to be around for a while. You can go ahead and report any bugs you have here. iOS 11.2 also introduces Siri kits for HomePod. That integration with the HomePod that will be released in December is uh, well on its way with 11.2. And for early iPhone 10 users, if you guys have uh, encountered the UI page view controller bug, it's basically where you get that page. It overlaps your HomePod indicator and then you can't slide back to go home a kind of a weird bug. Now I'm actually in post processing already, but when there are a few new features found, I gotta add those in. Anyways, so another one in Apple Music. Actually, when you're playing a song and you force close the application, this is what happens. Just an abrupt ending of the song. Now, listen to this. It fades out, it has a really nice uh, fade out sound, so not as abrupt. Now finally, in iOS 11.2, handoff for calls is enabled. As you can see, a user has reported that he was able to get the handoff call to his iPad from within this firmware. It's super cool. And an inconsistency where if you were logged into iCloud with one ID and the Apple ID with a different, your actual icon would not show up. Now that has been fixed and no longer do you get the empty avatar and I will actually show one of your icons there. So there it is for the features on 11.2. 
definitely a lot of great stuff. It feels very good, very responsive. I love how fast the app switcher now activates and that they change a lot of the animations, the boot up flashing, really cool stuff. So how's the actual speed? Let's go ahead and run a Geekbench here, uh, tell the difference. And while this is working, I just wanted to warn you guys, if you do update to iOS 11.2 and you're getting an iPhone 10 here in just a few days, you will not be able to restore from backup on that guy. Just keep that in mind because it will ship with iOS 11.1. So just be careful, don't update to 11.2 if you're getting the iPhone 10 here in a few days. Uh, have some patience uh, if you guys want to restore your backup, that is. All right, so here it is on 11.2, very great scores. And uh, just to show you the comparison here before I got this on 11.0.3. So very, very minimal difference. Uh, great all around performance on this guy. So there it is, great update guys. Definitely would recommend it. If you're not upgrading to an iPhone 10 in a few days, go ahead and update. It's better than 11.1, I think, stability wise. Uh, of course, you get a few new features there in between. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace.